So we're back on the Alteza today and today we're going to do a timing belt and service on it. You can see we've got a wee sticker here that says the timing belt was done at 93,000 kilometers. We're now at 161, so I'd say it's definitely due for another. So I've actually got a Toda racing one to go in. I don't know if it's any different. It's red. But first, I'm going to start tearing the car down. Now, I've never worked on one of these before. I don't know what exactly is involved. I've sort of taken a quick look at it. Obviously, strut brace is going to have to come off. Valve cover. Well, valve cover cover. As you can see, the valve cover's under here. And it looks totally different to this. At least this will have to come off. I don't know if the actual valve cover will need off. Probably. Um, we'll need to get rid of the timing belt cover down here. And all the belts will have to come off. I'll probably pull off this um, coolant tank to give me a bit more room, but because this is a four cylinder, you see we've got loads and loads of room to work with in there. Um, yeah, I'll, I might pull off the air box. I'll see how I get on. Um, I just might need that room. Right, so it's been a little while since I've worked on the car. Um, last time I was pulling the timing gear off and I've just been working a wee bit today. And I've got the timing belt off. So I had to go a wee bit further into it than I wanted. I had to pull the radiator out, airbox out. One thing I don't know with this is the timing marks. If you look up here, you can see this and this have been marked as well as down here. And you can see there's a wee arrow there. Yeah, zoom in. See that wee arrow? That points to that being at top dead center. It doesn't look like it is maybe from that view, but it is. It's just the angle I've got the camera at. But the thing that's worrying me, do you see these two marks? They're off. I don't know if they're supposed to be facing each other. like. That hasn't been off since I've taken the time belt off, that's what it looked like. So I don't know how that's supposed to look. It's supposed to look like that, like the top marks look okay. I don't know. I'm going to put the time belt on and I'll turn it over by hand and just see, like, does it feel like it's going, like, when I turn the engine over my hand, does it feel like it's binding or anything like that? And then we'll start it and see if it runs like well or like shite. Um, I don't know if it could be because these are, you know, we've got the dual VVTi. If maybe that's misaligned them slightly. I'm just going to put it on exactly the way it came off. And the car ran great beforehand. It should run great now. Right, so I've got everything torn apart. I just got the water pump out there. The bad part about this engine is you can see this mount is for the aircon compressor and it goes over the water pump right there. So it's really annoying you have to pull the air compressor off, move it out of the way, unplug a few bits, and then take the bolts off on the side to get the water pump out. But the upshot is if you look at the inside of that engine, it is so clean. Normally if like coolant changes haven't been done on time, that kind of thing, that gets all crusty and horrible as basically the engine rots from the inside out. But that looks really good. Um, the whole car is so clean. The coolant's nice and red and lovely, so it just goes to show this car really was looked after well. So it's now time to start reversing all this. I think this is about as torn down as the engine's going to get now. It's a case of water pump on, idlers on, tensioner on, belt on, tension it up, and we should be good to go. All right, so we've got the engine mostly back together. I put a fresh alternator belt on it. I couldn't get this one in time, so I've just left it. I still need to put the radiator and all back in. Um, 
but first I'm going to clean the engine bay and that'll probably have to wait for another time but what I just want to do is even though I don't have the uh, airflow meter attached I just want to try and start the engine and make sure it sounds like it's timed correctly before it continue on okay I've turned it over by hand as I said and it doesn't it's not binding or anything like that it seems to have good compression so it's all a good sign obviously I can't run it for too long Right, that's about all that air do. Oh god, yeah, pumping loads of water out. What was left in the engine bay? Oh no, hang on, it's coming from somewhere else. Shit. No, oh, that's coming from the driveway. Lovely. Um, but no, that sounded perfect. Happy with that. The timing belt must have been done well. We're gonna prepare the old Delteza for its first winter in this country. Here, we don't get the worst winters in the world. It's very rainy and cold, but the worst thing is we salt the roads here, so cars just don't last very long. And a lot of UK cars rot like crazy. So I've got a plan to try and protect the Alteza because it's so clean underneath. I want to try and protect it as much as possible from rust and rot and all the salt on the roads. I've already taken off all the trim underneath and I want to take off the exhaust. Um, then I need to go through and clean and degrease the whole underside of the car, get all the dirt and all the crap off it so it's ready to be under sealed. And I've got Dinatrol cavity wax and under seal to go on and I'll spray that on on top. I also want to do the doors in the boot pockets um, and in the front rear arches with the cavity wax I'll also put it in the sills and the chassis legs just to make sure all that's well well sealed So I've pulled off the mid and back section of the exhaust and the Cusco ladder brace. So now underside, underneath the car looks like so. So the next step is to come through and clean all this up. It's actually remarkably clean just to take any dirt off it and then I'll degrease it to get all the WD-40 and oil and whatever else might be on there and then let that dry overnight and then the next day we can come through and start sealing it all up So you join me in my kitchen and I've got all the Denatrol stuff here. So for the underside, we'll be using Denatrol 4941 in black. And then for the cavities, it'll be Denatrol 1000. Last night I got the car degreased and cleaned all over. So now we're ready to underseal it. It's dried out overnight. I might give it a wee bit of a blow dry just to make sure we're all good. But the reason we're in here is I find it makes it a lot easier to spray this stuff if you warm it up first. It's really, really viscous and the compressor can have a hard time trying to spray it. But if you warm it up, it just thins it out slightly and lets you spray it a bit better. So what I just do is run the tap and fill up the sink with warm water. And then once 
that's reasonably full. We'll drop a few cans in, don't want to drop them all in, just whatever we plan on using. And just keep it there as you need one. Lift it out, go outside, spray, spray, spray. If you need another, come and grab it. If you're finishing up for a while, put it back in to keep it warm. Right, so the first thing I'm going to do is use the Dinatrol 1000. It's nice and warm, you can hear it's very thin. And I've got a selection of hoses that goes on the end of this gun that's connected to the compressor. So all you do is just screw this onto the bottom of that. And then I'm going to attach the hose on the end. It's got this little 360 degree nozzle and then I'm basically going to stick it in the chassis legs in the sills front and back I'm going to try and get as far in as I can and then in any holes I can get in the inner arches and just in any trim like bracketry underneath just to fill all the cavities um, I'm going to start with that and then I'm going to switch to the black underbody coating and spray that all on the outer bits and I'm also going to spray some of the thinner stuff in the arches there, front and back, and undercoat any bits I don't do. So, I'm going to get started here. Right, so we've got the black stuff now, done the cavities as much as I can. There's more, I want to do the pockets and all, but I can't open the boot because I've masked it all off. So I've sealed up the cavity wax and I'll take that back out in a couple of hours once I finish with this. This is the black stuff, so it's going to get sprayed all in the arches, all in everywhere. So all that will get sprayed. And then all the underside here. He, all this chassis. So it'll be nice and black. Because I can already see. There's bits like this that have chipped off. And it's fine now. There's not a spot of rust on it. But it wouldn't take much of salty roads to wreck that. So I'm glad I'm doing it. So I'm going to get started here. I'll probably start in the arches and then move to the underside. Right. So I've just pulled the masking tape off there and you can take a look in. You can see it's very, very black metal, still wet. See, it's not the neatest job in the world, but it should keep it well protected. You can see I've hit plugs and wires and all, but sure, it'll do it no harm. Then in the back, same story. All good, and then underneath is all much the same. And I've done in the boot floor and up into the pockets there. So it's just, it's especially areas like in here, it's really good to have well protected like that. Because you gotta think when you're driving along, that's just getting hit with rock chips and everything and just builds up dirt as does in here, just fills with dirt. So having, it, having that protective layer is very, very good. So yeah, just to run you over that again. Basically, if you want to do this yourself, you need to get the car up as high as you possibly can in the air. Like with the front, I've got it set on tires, but I actually put the jack on a pallet to try and get it up higher and higher. Um, 
get the car as high as you can safely of course you need to really pull off as much as you can I could have done with like if you pull off subframes, suspension, fuel tanks, all that you will get the best result with the most protection I don't have the patience or the time to do that and especially because there's nothing really needs done with this car pulling it to bits like that just seems like a waste so I took off all the under trays, all the heat shields I could and I took the exhaust off because that really freed up a lot of space especially around the back the reason I wanted to take the exhaust off was because it you, takes up this whole area and as I said one of the problem areas on this car is the pockets they tend to rot from the inside out but I wanted to protect it from the outside so I just took the exhaust off there and it allowed me to get up in this whole area which was otherwise just the back box so and you don't have to take the exhaust off but take as much as you're comfortable removing as possible after that you need to degrease it make sure you've got all the road grime off and give it a really good scrub I scrubbed it down a lot with one of those hose brush attachments a bit of soapy water a bit of all-purpose cleaner just to try and get all every bit of dirt off because you don't want to trap dirt underneath this so you really have to make sure it's clean especially in the crevice of the arch there that needs to be spotless you don't want to just trap mud underneath you'll only do more harm after that give it a degrease make sure there's no waxes or engine oil or anything stuck to the bottom because that will wreck the adhesion of this and then once it's completely dry like this I let it dry overnight and that was perfect bone was bone dry in the morning as for what under seal you want to use I used the Dinatrol 1000 and the 4941 I got it directly from Dinatrol themselves I bought the um, I think it was the car kit which came with like 12 cans and so far I've only used three of the under seal and one of the cavity wax I'll probably use more cavity wax when it comes to doing the pockets and the boot and the inner sills but I need to wait till I take the interior out for that for now this will give it a good initial protection against most stuff and then just spray it you don't really want to spray it on like suspension components stuff that moves around I don't know what effect it would have but it's probably not great just put it on the big metal areas look out for the trouble areas make sure you know on your particular car if you know where they tend to rust try and get in there and do it but I think most mostly it'll be okay with with what you're getting you don't want something that dries hard you want something soft and waxy which what the Dinatrol is it does dry, it does cure and it doesn't drip but it has that soft layer to it because if you put on something that's really hard and um, what can end up happening is it chips like we saw underneath the car it chips off and then water is able to get in underneath or because this is soft it doesn't chip you know it's it's too soft to chip off and um, and that prevents water getting in behind the under seal because that can cause you some real bother it's very easy you can do it with aerosol or if you have a compressor I find the compressor is a way better option the aerosols I always find they lose all their pressure and you've still got like half a can of stuff or the nozzles gets all clogged up and you lose you know you maybe only get 30 40 percent of the product out of the can the rest gets trapped in where the compressor you get almost all of it out so that's way better and then just spray it on leave it at least overnight I think they say seven days it takes to fully cure but I'll just leave it overnight and then tomorrow I'll come back and put all the under trays the exhaust and all the heat shields back on the car <laughs> 